Well, Myanmar might have uh, been shunned by the West for years, but it has one very powerful ally, China. Trade between the two neighbors stood at $4.4 billion last year. That's up by more than 50% from the year before. Chinese investments in Myanmar in 2010 totaled $12.3 billion, most of that going to natural resources and energy projects. Well, Myanmar gives landlocked parts of China access to the Indian Ocean, both for trade and possible military purposes. But the relationship has had its rough patches too. In August 2009, refugees flooded into China because of fighting on the Myanmar side of the border between rebels and troops angering Beijing. Let's look at the relationship between China and Myanmar in more detail now. Joining us uh, from Beijing is Stephanie Klein Albrandt, Northeast Asia Project Director at the International Crisis Group. It's good to have you with us. So the, uh, there's been a, a move towards uh, a liberalization of the political and economic environment, as our correspondent was telling us about, but it's far from complete. Why is the U.S. moving to engage Myanmar now? The U.S. has had a strategy of engagement with the Myanmar regime for about two years right now. I think the United States is looking to engage Myanmar to make sure that these reforms actually take root, that um, the ethnic situation, which continues to produce um, internal, internally displaced persons and refugees, is solved, and they'd like to see um, release of political prisoners. I think that the idea is to encourage Myanmar to make sure that these reforms stick and that they're meaningful. Aung San Suu Kyi uh, is sounding more optimistic about the political reforms. Uh, do you think the reforms, are they looking genuinely more credible? You know, that's what's interesting about the reforms in Myanmar is that they really are led by the people. What you've seen is a huge amount of pent-up frustration over years, of course, that culminated in the Saffron Revolution and you've had a lot of desire for reform. You've got a president who's come in, Tin Sein, who's actually been prepared to make bold moves. And as you referenced earlier, Tan Shui was ready to step down. The country is really looking at the new geo geopolitical situation. It needs to strengthen its economy, particularly so that it has a stronger bargaining position with regard to the larger economies that border it, and so that it can actually make sure that the reforms actually go through and are successful. And what's prompted the change of thinking on, on the, the part of Myanmar's rulers? I mean, is there a bit of realignment of their uh, alliance with China going on, or is it simple uh, economic issues that's driving a rethink? We're not seeing necessarily a, realign a realignment of the Chinese relationship, but what's clear is that the fact that the people in Myanmar have more of a voice now has led to the bold decision recently for them to cancel a Chinese-sponsored dam in the Kachin part of the territory. Ch the Myanmar people are very critical of Chinese investments, Chinese natural resource extraction, because they see it as intransparent. They see that local communities are not informed and consulted, and they see environmental degradation. So China is going to be challenged. It's going to have to provide more social benefits. Chinese companies are going to have to consult local communities more. And we're seeing some of the thinking here is actually along those lines, how to better engage. So the relationship will be tweaked as a result of this. Myanmar will have a stronger bargaining position vis-a-vis -vis China, but the basic relationship, which is asymmetric, with Myanmar being the weaker partner, is going to persist, and Myanmar is going to continue to need Chinese investment in order to continue its reforms. All right, Stephanie Klein-Albert, it's been good talking to you.